Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. Deep down in my heart, I'm ethnocentric, which means I think my race is the superior one. Oh, I think, I say it. Wait, no, let me finish. Hey, look. Let me finish. Hey, look. Let me finish. So, white is better than all. No, let me finish. Okay. Hey. I think everybody thinks that they're just not honest about it. Hey, I'm not racist though. I like all types of comments. Did I say I don't like people? People only you think that. Wait, so you said you are what? You are racist? You're saying you're like, you're I racist? I think everybody's a racist at, at that level. No, you said you are you racist. racist. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah, I'm trying to be yes, honest. I'm racist. No, I'm not saying it again. I've said it enough. So you're racist. I think I slightly told you to stop speaking. Yes, you Put your phone up. I, 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 I actually respected you for a while, but like, I'm putting your phone up. I don't even got no more respect for you. Put it up. In Pflugerville, Texas, a middle school teacher was caught on video admitting to being a racist to his students. Yeah, yeah. So you are a racist? Damn, how many times I gotta say it? <gasps> oh, really? Are you cussing at me? No, I'm not cussing at anybody. <laughs> Cause I'm, he's just, I'm frustrated with this conversation. <laughs> that shit started. <laughs> Someone likes to be more racist. You asked the question. Oh, no, you were talking to him. Get it, my love. He said, yes, I'm a racist. Yes. Hey. Somebody asked a question, I I responded. Hey. hey. I'll be sure to put this on the internet. <laughs> hey. I hope you know I'm famous, so I'm gonna play on the internet. I'll be sure to put this on the internet. Yeah, you guys, do what you need to do. I'm gonna call my father and tell him to post this. This horde is right over there. <laughs> and you know my and dad has over is a black. on Instagram, so I'm gonna tell him to post you, this. You, you guys don't think that I've made peace with all this stuff? You've probably already seen this video making the rounds online. A middle school teacher in Pflugerville, Texas, naturally Texas, is telling his classroom full of students that he's an ethnocentrist and that he believes the white is superior. He said, I think everyone believes that. And then when the kids ask him, so that means you don't like people of other races? Oh, uh, that doesn't mean I don't like people. Oh, yeah, spoken like a white supremacist. Why I can't be racist? I just like you niggers. I don't mind hanging around you niggers at all. Now, this putrid incident has already resulted in this clown predictably being fired. But what needs to be remembered is this was not some fluke, wasn't some one-off. This was not some sort of coincidence. This is precisely what people like Christopher Rufo have been bringing about. This is the Christopher Rufo effect. All of the phony white outrage and all of the racial hysteria that people like Rufo stir up so that they can make white people angry for the sake of hopefully getting them mad enough to vote. This is what it results in because that's the entire point. The point is to intimidate school librarians and embolden white supremacists. This racist little man's behavior is exactly what Rufo and the Manhattan Institute want to encourage. Teachers and education administrators in Texas have been warning about this from the very jump. Everyone can see that this is exactly what Christopher Rufo's absurd racial crusade was meant to bring about. And it's happening exactly the way that everybody knew it would. It was meant to embolden and encourage white supremacists in the classroom to be blatantly racially hostile, and that's exactly what's happened because that's what these right-wing racist culture warriors like Christopher Rufo want. Keep in mind the Manhattan Institute is also the same place that employs incompetent rhetoricians like Heather McDonald. She's the one who wrote that ridiculous fiction book, The War on Cops. And they're also the very first ones to claim that white people are victims of racism, that the primary victims of racism in America, don't you know? The first ones to say that being racist towards black people is freedom of speech. The Manhattan Institute has never seen an act of anti-black racism that they could not defend or could not justify or rationalize. They've never seen an example of anti-black hate speech that they couldn't embrace and stick up for. But the problem that they're having is, well, this flies in the face of what their branding allegedly was. Make no mistake, they don't want to actually have to say anything against this, so don't let Rufo's little Twitter tweets fool you at all, okay? What's happened is the bad guys have been put on the defense of the last few years, and they cannot allow a stalemate. They've lost ground, so they need to have an overwhelming push back to the far right, so it's clear and undeniable that they're flat out saying there's going to be no more mentioning of white supremacy or racism in America. And of course, that's exactly what every white supremacist wants. That way, they think to themselves, well, nobody's going to be able to call me racist no matter how racist I actually behave. And that's the point. Rufo and his pals, they aren't fooling anyone. 
They told lies about how there weren't any teachers who were being racist against black students. Why? This, the only ones being racist are these teachers talking to these white kids about history. History is racist. The agitprop so-called laws that Rufo and his ilk have been encouraging the passage of was meant to intimidate teachers from teaching about the basic history of white racism in this country, which is what defines the United States, by the way, founded by white supremacists for white supremacists. When they said that professing that one race was superior to another, what they meant was don't teach that white supremacy exists. But now this incident has happened in Texas, a state where Rufo and his pals got some of those asinine don't teach about race laws passed. And now Rufo has been forced to make a clearly insincere Twitter tweet, but one only, by the way where he pretends, well, I think this person should be fired, when in reality, this was just simply too egregious, it got too much publicity for him to ignore it. Because everybody was already banging on him on Twitter, going, hey, Rufo, uh, didn't you say that uh, you were passing laws to stop this kind of thing? Which, of course, everybody knows exactly what he wasn't doing. He's offering a one-and-done throwaway denunciation, and then he immediately returned to his lying talking points that teaching basic history is somehow racist a CYA tweet, and then we're back off to the races again. And that's because the only examples of teachers teaching racial superiority in the classroom came from the very people who Rufo's racial hysteria laws were not written to punish. White supremacists in the classrooms. Oh no, it's not your teachers who were teaching that the founders of the United States were slave owners. Oh no, that's not the people who are talking about my race is superior to yours, or racial superiority at all. It's the white supremacists who got the green light from Rufo, and now Rufo has been burned by his own racial hysteria. No cure for stupid. But don't expect for Rufo to be too worried about all this. And the reason is the Democrats haven't done anything about these white right think tanks and their blatant violations of the law in order to make exposing and fighting white supremacy all but illegal. Democrats control state legislatures. They've gained governorships in the last election. So where's the reciprocal legislation to punish any mention of anything that even hints at anti-black racism? Instead, Democrats have taken the exact opposite tack. They're refusing to push back against these right white think tank narratives that discussing race should be prohibited in the society. Democrats are not passing any laws to push back against this white right encroachment on basic constitutional law. Democrats aren't even proposing anything to punish any attempts to use critical race theory as a political football. They're not protecting things that are important to their constituencies and they're not doing anything that challenges white supremacy. Same way the Democrats actively campaign against defunding the police. And they don't propose anything meant to rein in the thugs with badges. Republicans push for policies that attack the black community each and every day. Things that are meant to make us targets. And Democrats either do absolutely nothing about it, or they gladly tell us that the Republicans are right. Where are Democrats at pushing for laws meant to punish these right-wing nuts who are weaponizing legislation against us? They're too busy trying to get the casual racist read white moderates to vote Democrat instead. Democrats don't let these other constituencies be targeted without announcing some counter legislation. The GOP front loaded the Supreme Court with Federalist Society flunkies and they reversed Roe v. Wade. So the Democrats have been saying that they want to pass a national abortion ban. Not a study, not a commission, but an actual law. And that law specifically is meant to protect a specific constituency. They spelled out very clearly what a policy would be because abortion is important to them. I posted for you on Twitter two days ago that Senate Democrats are saying that they're confident they can get a bipartisan bill passed to legislate gay marriage at the federal level so as to protect it against this activist Supreme Court. And as you see, this is also being done at the state level too. Michigan, Kansas, Kentucky, states where Democrats don't control the legislatures, and yet those Democratic donors got to work funding efforts to get laws passed to make abortion legal in those states, to tell the people at the state level, go ahead and vote for a statewide abortion initiative. So when white women's access to abortion is threatened, when the LGBT community's ability to marry is threatened, the Democrats fight at the national and state levels. And it doesn't take them years to do it. It doesn't take massive demonstrations for them to do it. They do it instinctively. They don't talk about the dangers of sloganizing or that gay marriage or abortion is, it's unpopular. 
or that passing abortion laws is just too difficult, it's not feasible, or that it would only serve to galvanize evangelical voters. Why, we don't want to move on this. All this would do is just galvanize those Republican voters. Instead, the Democrats acted as if abortion is the single most popular issue in the history of the world. They wouldn't even discuss its popularity or lack thereof. Apparently, there's zero political downside to giving women the right to abort their babies. Democrats don't think that that would mobilize their opponents at all, apparently. They don't make excuses about what they can't do when it comes to illegal immigration, either. The only time the Democrats start claiming that what Democratic voters want is unfeasible or unpopular or a losing issue with voters is if it's something pertaining to black people, something that might benefit black people, something that black people want. Then all of a sudden, oh, that's too controversial. That's not feasible. Oh, that would kill us to come the next election. And they do that with everything pertaining to us. Biden promised a White House-level police oversight commission, and the second he won the presidency, he immediately turned right around and said he ain't doing it, said, well, Congress should handle it. He doesn't have enough time. But of course, that didn't happen. Nancy Pelosi didn't even bother to say that the congressional Democrats weren't going to do it. Instead, she just went on about her non-black business, and predictably, the white media didn't mention it either. And you know who else didn't mention it? The congressional black talkers. Seems there's never any issue important enough to them that's sufficient to get them to vote as a block or to speak on our behalf as a group. And we all know why that is. As these bootlick politicians see it, they can appeal to a non-black voter base and win office without us. Willie Brown, London Breed, Karen Bass, Eric Adams, and others have done this. So to the congressional black talkers, they're already on the inside looking out. As they see it, they've insulated themselves from whatever vulnerabilities and whatever dangers the rest of us face. To the bootlicks, they've escaped blackness. That's just a brand name to them. Black is a brand name. But it doesn't mean anything because they'll gladly serve any non-black interest who comes along. And that brings me back to the beginning. This racist teacher is not some one-off. So don't think to yourself that the Democrats are going to discover religion. As far as they're concerned, this is just something for them to mention in passing and see if you'll vote for them so they can do nothing about it. The answer to white supremacists in the classroom is the same answer to trash like Christopher Rufo, and that's black parents making it clear they will act to protect their children. When black folks start getting bold about that, you're going to see the Christopher Rufos and all of these duplicitous Democrats start to back down. Because no law of man supersedes the law of nature, and the first law of nature is to ensure that your offspring survives. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Alexandria Sturgeon, Junius, Charles Johnson, Pinky Moore, and Thenian Ramcharan. Salute to them, and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.